Hi, this is Olivia Reinauer, mentor for the Supremes cohort. This video will cover topics around funding and budget with a focus on some of the potential methods for funding an OER initiative. This ties into the budget and resources part of your action plan. The question being, how do you get what you need in order to achieve your goals? We're going to be covering a couple of different categories of funding models. I have just divided these into self-funding, external funding, or no funding. And then we'll also talk briefly about return on investment, or ROI, and also about writing a budget. Self-funding means that the institution is covering the cost, either by reallocating existing funds or by asking students to pay a fee um, and I've further divided these into options that would be free to students and options that would be low cost to students. Free to students is an institution allocated budget. This could potentially be a budget line associated with student success. Um, it could be a budget line within the library or any of many other places. It could also come from a single institution or from a university system or community college system. The risk with this type of funding is that it could change if budgets tighten or if priorities shift. Under low cost to students, we have a couple of possibilities and there, there may be additional ones that are not included in this presentation. A vendor pass through fee is a payment made directly to an OER courseware provider, or it could be a payment made through the bookstore. So an example of this would be Lumen Learning's Waymaker platform, uh, which you can potentially charge students through the bookstore as if it were a, a textbook. And that would be, you know, something under $40. While the course materials may technically still comply with the five hours of open, this would not be an option if you've marketed OER as zero course materials cost. So for that reason, this model might work best for affordable course materials initiatives. A course fee would be similar to a lab fee that is associated with a particular OER course, and it's used to continue to fund the OER initiative. A good example of this funding model is in place at Kansas State University. So we also have external funding. This is obviously funding that comes from outside of your institution. And some examples of external funding sources are the state legislature, grants, uh, sometimes donors, and less commonly, uh, but it's been experimented with, is crowdsourcing. Uh, these are a great way to kickstart an OER initiative, but because it's typically one time funding or limited time funding, a, a sustainability plan really needs to be in place for when the funding ends. We are not going to explore any of these funding sources in depth in this presentation, but do keep in mind that you can be creative when applying for grants or requesting other sources of external funding. Uh, you don't have to just look for opportunities that are specific to OER. OER ties into a number of areas, uh, OER and education, open education, I should say, ties into a number of areas such as teaching and learning innovation, student success, college affordability, equity, and many more. Um, another thing to keep in mind with external funding is that these types of sources may have some strings attached. So for example, a requirement that you complete training, that you meet specific deadlines or participate in specific tracking and reporting of metrics. So no funding. Uh, if you do not have funding and are unlikely to be able to secure any new funding in the near future, never fear. Uh, as many of us know from experience, it is possible to accomplish a lot with no funding at all. My advice would be to first take stock of your existing resources. Uh, these would include human resources, technological, knowledge, physical, etc. And there's another video this month um, just on resources. 
There are usually also at least a small number of librarians and faculty who are willing to work on an OER initiative solely based on interest and enthusiasm. And these trailblazers can often lead the way for others. Uh, you can also consider non-financial incentives that might appeal to your stakeholders. So for faculty, for example, this could include student engagement, uh, professional advancement, such as um, tenure and promotion credit, uh, release time, and, and more. I'm sure you can think of others. For additional information on some of these funding models that we've discussed, I recommend taking a look at the OER Champion Playbook and the OER Field Guide for Sustainability Planning. And both of these links are included in the information accompanying this video in the online course module. These are some suggested questions to ask yourself when thinking about funding. Um, so the first one is, which funding models has my institution already used? What has been successful? And how can we ensure that our OER initiative is sustainable? And then if you do not have any funding for OER, what are some possible models or sources for your institution? And something that you could do if you are seeking inspiration is to consider looking back at your OER crush or crushes and seeing uh, the type of funding that they have adopted. All right, so this slide looks a little dense, but we are, it's mostly just resources. Um, when talking about attempting to secure funding, it's probably important that we at least touch on ROI or return on investment. There is still uh, more research I think needed in this area in relation to OER, but some examples are listed on this slide um, and also examples of, of how you may be able to try to demonstrate some return on investment for your OER initiative. Um, if you're able to do that, it's a terrific uh, talking point when you're seeking funding and uh, from your administration. Oh, and I should say that these links are included in the video description as well in the online course module. And finally, budget. Although um, the word budget is in the title of this presentation, we're actually not going to spend a lot of time on how to construct a budget. And that is because there really is no one correct way. And what works for each of you is going to vary widely depending on your funding and your individual action plan. So one way to approach the budget portion of your action plan would be to complete your SMART goals and your action items, and then estimate costs, if there are any, for each of, of those items and just work from there. You can also ask your dean or director if they have a preferred way for you to submit any budget items. If you do not have any money to budget, you can consider writing up a potential budget just in case a funding opportunity falls in your lap, or you can focus more on your existing resources and discuss those and how those will be deployed, or even um, just include a plan for how you might try to secure funding in the future. So we do have uh, an activity associated with this funding and budget presentation. In preparation for this month's cohort meeting, consider completing it. Um, it's just a brief form. So it's uh, shared in the video description. And it's just called the Funding Budget and Grants Activity. And um, it has two parts. First is a very brief survey regarding the current funding model or models that you're using at your institution. And then the second part is called Making an Ask, which you can also think of as how to get what I need. And this is a short written activity that will guide you through some brainstorming about making an ask for funding or for a particular resource need. And uh, you will receive an emailed copy of your responses that you can refer to in your August cohort discussion. Thank you so much. And please uh, feel free to let me know or your cohort mentor if you have any questions at all.